Okay, hi everyone. I think we'll get started. Um, I am here today to talk to you about why every lab needs a data connected ELN with Bernie, our uh, product manager, and in particular for this project, um, our ELN product manager. So some of you may may recognize one of or both of us. Um, both Bernie and I are trained scientists. We have experience both in the lab doing bench work writing notebooks, writing ELNs, as well as um, doing data analytics and data management uh, within those labs, <clears throat> both sort of in the lab environment. And then of course here at LabKey, helping support folks get started uh, with their data management journey. So maybe just a, a few logistics things as well. As we go through the presentation today, please feel free to type in the, the Q&A or the chat, any questions that you may have. We'll get to those likely at the end. If we see something that's kind of relevant um, in that moment and we get to it, um, we'll definitely try and sort of answer throughout as well. But questions are, are definitely encouraged. So I suspect that this is going to be a fairly redundant slide for most of us. I hope that I, I don't need to convince you today why notebook why notebooking is so important, but I do want to kind of capture those main themes around why we care about notebooks. Um, and so uh, as you as you may know or, or probably do already know, you know, notebooks in general in the lab are really used to capture all of the things that um, uh, happened during an experiment, including um, the, the samples that you used or reagents that you used, what the experiment was for, what observations or data uh, came out of that, um, and then uh, typically sort of the uh, results and um, uh, uh, summary section. So generally, you know, uh, record keeping is is going to be very important for um, anything you're doing in the laboratory. You wanna make sure that you as a person can kind of track the work that you're doing so you can go back to it later and, and make those references. But um, really at that higher level, good notebooks can really help support uh, folks as they're writing publications or if they're submitting for an IND or potentially supporting patent applications. Uh, if you have a really good record of, of what you've done and the data around that, that sort of reporting aspect becomes much, much easier um, down the line. Reproducibility, of course, which is important to any scientific experiment, making sure that you could reproduce your experiments if needed, folks in your lab can reproduce um, those experiments, or sort of uh, the, the scientific community as a whole can make, um, can, can reproduce those experiments as well. So good, well-documented lab notebooks will help with good, well-documented publications, which then can kind of help um, folks reproduce your work. Um, IP protection as well. So um, if you are um, uh, uh, filing for, for any IP, um, lab notebooks really are considered legal documents. And so those can be used to kind of support um, those submissions um, or um, any claims uh, against folks in court. Um, and then, of course, sort of that that future planning aspect. So um, well after you may have left a certain lab, people are going to be building on your research. Um, and so making sure that you have sort of legacy good uh, notebooks for folks to kind of build their research on, on top of yours is, is always very helpful. So there really has been kind of an amazing evolution of modern laboratory notebooks um, in the last 40 years or so. And so, you know, the, the typical and, and still very standard one that, that folks use in the lab today is paper. And that could be sort of bound notebooks with a carbon copy, or a lot of people will move to sort of loose leaf um, three ring binders to, to capture their work. These are often very, very flexible, right? It's just blank canvas, literally in, in kind of every sense of the word. They can be very low cost, um, but in this era of, of digital data capture, you're often, often having to reference outside of that paper to capture the results that live in a computer or a server or cloud somewhere. Um, and so that can be very challenging as you're reviewing or if you're sort of going back to those uh, notebooks for any of the things that, that I talked about in the previous slide. 
they can be very challenging to search as well. I'll probably pull up this example uh, a handful of times in this presentation, but um, in one of the labs that, that I was in, um, we kept all paper notebooks and often would have to go back and refer to um, that information that was being captured there. And we had shelves and shelves and shelves of, of paper notebooks. And so it could, even in a very organized system, it would take hours to kind of search for something that we wanted to find. Um, and then they can also really be siloed by um, individual folks within the lab, especially if they're sort of bound notebooks, you know, that that often um, uh, belongs to a certain person. And so that um, information can um, can kind of get lost as that person leaves the lab or kind of stores that notebook and, and starts a new one. Text editors um, or, or sort of notebooking tools um, really kind of up the game. I think not all of us have uh, legible penmanship, so that really helped to at least be able to um, read what other people might have done. Um, writing, of course, in a text editor it is very easy as well. You're not having to use white out or, or cross things out. Um, Again, that data uh, that, that's being referenced within the notebook is likely going to be stored elsewhere. It can be difficult to authenticate. And so that's why most people end up printing out these, um, these notes that they've taken in a text editor to do sort of a review process or long-term storage. Um, so kind of all the other challenges you get with paper kind of come with text editors usually as well. Then along came the sort of built to purpose electronic laboratory notebook that was really designed to be a, a, um, a, a lab notebook outside of a text editor for folks to use. And these traditional ELNs definitely were simple and kind of improved that searchability component that were that was hard to find in the others. Um, and they were kind of what what we like to call sort of traditional standalone applications. So things that kind of exist as its own um, as, as its own product that's that's on a computer. Um, and so that can be sort of a, a benefit, but then also sort of a weakness in terms of um, uh, searching for uh, other data that's being referenced as well. And then um, could potentially require that duplication or referencing of data, uh, as I mentioned. And then came along kind of this idea of having a data connected ELN, which really provides this powerful traceability and searchability when all of our data almost is coming through in a digital format already. Um, so you can associate all of that data um, and have it be stored in the same application as your notebook, um, which then kind of ends up supporting these data fair principles, which we'll be talking about today. So some of you might be asking, like, what is a data connected ELN? I've never heard of this before. Um, and so really, this is kind of a new industry term that um, describes this ability to create uh, a unique data registration around that metadata that you're capturing um, within an experiment, as well as tying that into a notebook entry. So these data connected ELNs like, will normally provide a very flexible integrated data management system. And so again, kind of centralizing everything, putting it in one place. They also will create sort of direct active links to all of that data from within the notebook itself. So as you're um, writing your notebook, you can create these active references uh, that refer to that data. Um, they should also be able to snapshot the data that's being referenced in addition to sort of the ELN snapshot that happens upon that review process. And then lastly, data connected ELNs will usually provide sort of these safeguarding mechanisms to really prevent data from um, getting orphaned or lost or basically creating it a dead end of, you know, we linked out to data, but um, that may have gotten, you know, deleted or, or something in the past. And so I want to kind of have some interactivity here. We're going to set up a poll um, around what is your current notebooking system. And so um, I think we made this one multi-choice. So feel free to kind of add um, add in as many as you can. I know a lot of people have sort of mixed responses here, um, and we'll take a look at those in in a couple minutes.
Great. So as the results are coming in, I'm kind of looking at it. There's actually a really nice mix between everything. So I, I hope that um, most of you will be able to take something away from this presentation, kind of where you're at today, and, and we can go from there. So I also mentioned FAIR principles, and um, it's it specifically in kind of relation to those data connected ELNs. And so I wanted to, to talk about this. This uh, somebody who's been in, in science for a while, I was around sort of pre-FAIR principles and then after, and um, I think it's always good to remind ourselves kind of what, what this is. Um, and so it consists of four kind of main components, the, the FAIR, the findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. And these kind of boil down to, to four, main thing, four main things, which, you know, data are findable by machines. So essentially being able to assign any data within a system, a globally unique identifier, or in the uh, NIH terms, they call this a DOI, a digital object identifier. Um, but then also this data should be able to be found by humans as well. So we may not recognize um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, but a machine can, whereas we might recognize something about like, oh, that is that sample from this mouse on this day with this condition. Um, and then after you know you create this this system where where data can be found, you also want to make it accessible. Um, and so this data uh, should be available kind of uh, with the appropriate levels of authentication and authorization, of course, kind of for for your organization. Interoperability really kind of points to the sense of being able to use this data once it is found and accessible. Um, potentially on, on other platforms or integrate it with, with other systems. And so oftentimes people will, will read into this as like, we wanna have our data stored in kind of a standard database, like a SQL server um, or Postgres or something like that, that can be uh, reused as we need to or shared with other people in kind of a format that, that other systems can um, understand. And then that last one, the, the reusability is, really that the this data can then be used for new research. So of course, this really kind of points to the other ones, you know, if you can find it, and if you can access it, and if you can use it kind of in your system. Um, and all of this is like done really well and has a bunch of rich met metadata captured on it, you should be able to kind of use that information to uh, form the basis of, of other research as needed. So I want to talk a little bit as well about how these data connected ELNs can really support the FAIR principles that, that we were talking about. Um, so findability, making sure that um, these systems are creating data that uh, ha are uniquely identifiable in some way. Um, they should also have customizable metadata, and that's really to make sure that the type of information that you're capturing on this data in the lab is relevant and um, can be customized by, by folks that are actually doing the science. Um, and then, of course, like being able to find it also means being able to search for it within the system, and that's really where, where the power of an electronic tool comes in over those, um, those paper uh, tools as well. Accessibility, making sure that the uh, data connected ELN really kind of enables that appropriate data sharing and access according to the business rules, again, of your organization. Interoperability, so making sure that um, the data is being captured in a standardized database that then can be kind of integrated um, and used by other systems. And this really could mean like you're pushing that data out to somewhere else or potentially even pulling other data into that system as well. And then again, you know, we, we continue to talk about this, but having that really rich associated metadata. metadata. So when it's interoperable, um, it also means kind of standardizing to uh, a common language. So if I am um, searching for mice, we're calling them mice or um, something else that, that we kind of agree to um, both in the lab, but then kind of uh, generally is in the scientific community, making sure that that, that becomes um, interoperable be between people and labs. 
And then that reusability component. So data connected ELNs by snapshotting the data and the ELN, it really allows um, for easy sort of sharing. You can um, typically like uh, share this data out as well if it's in kind of a standardized format in a database as well. And of course, there are some uh, additional benefits to having a data connected ELN. I'm going to kind of bring this high level to what we were talking about originally of why notebooking in general is, is so important. And so that record keeping component, obviously, um, data connected ELNs will really ensure that data integrity at every step, not just that the, that the notebook is authored well, but that all of the data associated with that notebook is tied in and makes sense and um, is accurate. It also allows for um, that really quick retrieval for reporting purposes. So as you're preparing for a publication or a submission, um, you can uh, get that information as, as quickly as possible. And then, of course, having sort of the centralized data management um, that really helps support laboratory collaboration. So if we are all in the same lab, all using the same system, all using the same structured database with ELN templates, we're able to um, uh, keep better records that people can understand later. Reproducibility, we kind of already talked about with those those fair data principles. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of skip over this one. Um, that IP protection component, um, making sure that there are no dead ends between the actual data and the notebook. Um, so you're uh, really uh, capturing kind of the full picture in, in every sense. Um, and then of course, having those snapshots. So um, it's not necessarily a live record once the um, once the notebook has been approved. Future planning, we kind of touched on this with, with record keeping as well, making sure that standardization is, is across team. So in three years from now, when I'm picking up some work uh, a postdoc left, I understand kind of the terminology that's being used um, and can understand what type of samples I'm using and where they came from. Um, <clears throat> as well as um, data connected ELNs will often allow you to reference other notebooks. And so in that sense, you can start creating a provenance between notebooks. So your research as a whole kind of gets a story of all of the experiments that may have led to a certain conclusion or, or outcome. And then, you know, the, the, the lesser of these that we haven't talked about yet, but of course is very important to all of us is efficiency in the lab, right? Like making sure that I'm not spending hours combing through notebooks, trying to find this one piece of data or verify um, that that sample had, had been contaminated or, or whatever it was. Um, also making sure that that um, that data integrity component is saving me time. So if I mistype something, if the system's going to tell me like, "Hey, are you sure you meant 150 percent?" That seems really weird. Um, and so it can you know decrease redundancy later if um, the data is much cleaner. <clears throat> and then of course having a really easy review process. So um, being able to uh, uh, send a notification to somebody that they've got an, uh, a notebook to review rather than kind of having this stack of papers on their desk, which like hopefully nothing gets lost if it's a big giant stack, right? So making that um, as simple as possible kind of again in this like digital era that we're in. So as we kind of think about these things, I think they're, it's really um, important to uh, look at sort of data connected ELNs in the full picture for your lab. So um, I'm looking now, it looks like the majority of us are not using data connected ELNs. Um, and so really what we want um, is, you know, hopefully to convince you that like this really is kind of the, the way of the future. Um, and so when you're evaluating these tools, make sure that they're easy to use and to set up and get that adoption from your lab. So oftentimes, interact with with the tool yourself if you can make sure your team gets to to try it as well if people are excited about it in the lab it means 
that they're more likely to use it. Um, making sure that you can both standardize the data, but then also customize those data structures for your lab, right? Um, and this can can be sort of in in the table format for for assay data or sample data that that you're inputting, but also making sure that you have established ELN templates that people can reuse, and so it becomes much easier to write and read and review those ELNs in the future. Making sure that you can reference and snapshot data, that is really the core component of, the, of a data connected ELN. If you cannot do that, it's probably just a traditional ELN. Um, and the, the other thing to, to look out for is really being able to sort of easily recover notebooks. So in, in a world where um, mistakes happen, um, things change over time, um, there are, are uh, certain places where you want to be able to um, amend a, a, a notebook that had already gone through the review process and making sure you can do that within the application rather than sort of outside of it in a siloed manner um, can be very, very helpful for, for folks as they're expanding. Looking for features that really help support that team collaboration and actually help you get work done rather than than um, hindering it you know Bernie and I both both having come from from laboratory backgrounds have experienced this firsthand where there can be tools introduced that um, slow things down and feel really burdensome without really providing those those benefits that you need so um, finding an ELN uh, that is going to um, help with with reporting um, make making sure that you can easily find things in that data connected ELN um, bonuses here is if you can have some visibility into the team's work as well. So if you're in, in leadership or management and want to evaluate kind of workloads or, or help people, or um, if you're in a really collaborative environment, um, knowing what other people are doing allows you to, um, to you know, continue to help them uh, succeed as needed. And then, of course, having that straightforward and secure review process, making sure that um, it's easy and exactly kind of what you need in terms of uh, security and permissions. And then lastly here, really looking for a tool that's both going to like fit your needs today, but then also supporting that long term growth, as you can imagine, um, you know, as your lab takes on new projects or changes or scales or grows, um, how you can create, find a tool that's going to sort of grow with you as well. So one more poll here for you guys. Um, I, I'd love to know sort of what challenges you're currently facing with your laboratory documentation or notebooking practices right now. Um, and let me see if I, I might not have ended the other poll. Sorry about that. Um, let me change over here, sorry. And this one will will show you the results um, in, in a couple minutes. But uh, while you're sort of answering this question, um, I want to hand this off to Bernie, who again, uh, Bernie Lee is our product manager of ELN here. He's really done all the groundwork to create um, a really fantastic data connected ELN that LabGee offers. And it, it's very exciting to, to hear from him today. Thank you, Hannah. Yep, I really appreciate the, the review of those important principles, and I get to spend a couple of minutes uh, talking about the ELN la the LabKey has developed, and that we we try to continue trying to improve with our partners. Uh, we've really tried to take those fair principles to heart. We've tried to make it uh, an important part of our of our consideration of our thinking as we as we continue to improve here. And LabKey's ELN is really intended to help unify your data capture and integration with the documentation of the processes and experiments that generated that data. Uh, we took what we've developed over LabKey's long history of data management successes and, and, and built this, this intuitive ELM that can directly connect with all of the structured data held within. We work to make collaboration easy uh, and useful uh, across your teams within the application, including everything from comment discussions uh, to providing data archives for use with the reports after the fact. Um, making authoring, reviewing, and finding notebooks easy is, is critical, something that you, you certainly heard Hannah talk about. 
Um, but there are many systems that, that effectively tax you heavily uh, for the value that they provide. Um, but we've, we've spent a lot of time working with our partners to make these operations in, in LabQZLM faster uh, and more intuitive than they are in, in some similar applications. Uh, and let us never forget the, the importance of, of processes that, that help protect your data and notebooks. Um, you know, standardizing, authoring, reviewing, sign-off protocols, um, uh, all of that stuff can really help ensure that critical information is captured, snapshotted, protected, um, and made appropriately accessible. <clears throat> so I'll briefly dive a little deeper in, and, and highlight some of the specific features of, of LabQZLM that, that help support both FAIR principles and some of the benefits that I just highlighted. Uh, so first, uh, let me emphasize the cloud-based nature of our products. You, you do not need a technical team to take advantage of the benefits mentioned. Um, our cloud engineers can get you started within days um, and our support and guidance is frankly, second to none. Um, we aim to build long-term partnerships, long-term relationships with those using our products. Um, that begins with low barriers to entry um, and ends with your success. And we, we have been told that we, we succeeded in producing an intuitive interface um, that, that typically requires little to no training, um, but we are available nonetheless to ensure a smooth transition I'm sorry, a, a smooth transition, a smooth launch, and wide adoption. Um, and then I wanna re-emphasize the direct connection to the underlying data. Um, this supports each aspect of, of those FAIR principles that Hannah talked about, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. The data is kept unique and secure and is findable both programmatically and by humans exploring the system. The data is accessible through direct reference, in a notebook and through deeper exploration. Uh, as in, you can click in and explore the data directly yourself. Uh, because the data resides in this structured form, uh, it can be, it, it can, it is, and it can be integrated with other related data for further use and it's reusable. It can be referenced by other notebooks and interrogated by other means. Then there's templates. Templates are a, a significant time saving device. Uh, they help standardize record keeping, eliminate the need to rewrite any often used descriptions and help ensure that notebooks are complete. Uh, we have current institutions using our ELN with you know, 60, 70, or even more templates that ultimately save their scientists and reviewers many hours a week. And that is, that's not an exaggeration. We also worked hard uh, to save projects, project teams time uh, when exploring existing notebooks. Finding notebooks relevant to your reviews, your future planning, and to starting new projects, it can be a very onerous task in an unstructured system. Uh, we make it really easy to find desired notebooks based on their titles, contents, uh, authors, the status of the notebook, and, and many other facets. Uh, you, can, you can even explore notebooks based on the data referenced within them. For example, you know, you can ask. You can essentially ask the question, you know, sh show me all of the notebooks um, with their data, um, show me all the notebooks that, that discussed a, a particular tumor source or you know, this molecule um, or that was involved or that involved a, a particular media batch um, as a means of exploring um, you know, how that, that work went and what the results were like. <clears throat> then we know that science is increasingly a team sport. As, as an example, you know, cell and development scientists often have to work in shifts to take care of their cells, take care of their products. And what each scientist does over time with those cells is relevant to the whole operation, to the whole experiment, if you will. Um, and in LabKeys ELN, they can all co-author one notebook allowing for a single review. Those reviews and, and the possible commentary between the, the people involved on a notebook are all facilitated by raised awareness within the application as well as email notifications. For us, a majority of our ELN users have migrated from other software that didn't satisfy them. Uh, we believe that each of our products containing LabQ's ELN, that's Sample Manager, our Biologics Limbs, and LabQ Server are flexible enough to accommodate your unique needs 
uh, and offer significant benefits. And we invite you to explore the variety of ways in which you can learn more. Bernie, I'm going to share the results from the poll here too. Maybe you can can kind of speak to that for a, a minute around what folks are struggling with currently on the call. Sure. Let's see. Uh, okay, I see the two the two that were were selected the highest are accuracy and completeness of notebooks. Data management, data connectivity, perfect. Yeah. So um, first, let me let me say that that we we have more details about these things on, on our site. Um, we we just put a, a link to um, it, explore some of these concepts a little bit deeper in regard to our ELM. But in regard to accuracy and completeness of notebooks, we, we have we have a few key um, ways of adding value and, and ensuring that that stuff happens. So first of all. Um, those, those templates um, can be extremely detailed. Um, you know, if you, you know, when you're doing any kind of work that is, uh, you know, anywhere from, from routine to occasionally repeated, um, and you want to make sure that um, you, are, you are completing all of the, you know, the entire write-up of, of, of what you've done, the, those templates can really give you a, a major kickstart and help set expectations for the people running the operations or the experiments, as well as the reviewers looking at them. Um, and then actually the, the data connectivity, the data management component also really contributes to that, that accuracy and completeness. You know, our systems are all data management systems. They, they help make sure that you are capturing all of the data that's, that's relevant to your, um, your experiments, that it's connected to each other, that any kind of uh, measurements, assay instrument runs that are done are connected to the samples that actually went into those machines. Um, and that those um, and that those samples have uh, critical relationships maintained within our system. When you have all of those things right, and it's it's really easy from within our our, our notebooks to make reference to that data, um, and you don't have to do more work than that. You captured it correctly the first time, um, and it it's simply present in the notebooks. Um, I also see a little bit. Uh, a, a few a few things on um, siloing um, and a little bit on 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 lack of adoption. And I, I actually suspect those two things are related to each other um, in that if it isn't clear how you would gain value from this, um, and if it isn't clear um, how all of all of the work within or, or across teams is related to each other, it's 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 harder to drive that adoption and it's um, it's harder to break down some of those those, those data and, and team silos. So, you know, in our systems, we we help you centralize that data and, and organize it by project and all, all those sorts of things. Um, and and then the notebooks have access to, to data across those pieces of work. And, and and we can also help facilitate some of some of the work itself, um, some of the handoffs between people. And so when all the data is centralized and related in an appropriate way, um, by different Team members going going through doing you know in practice rather unrelated work different instruments different rooms maybe different cities that they might be doing the work in but it, it all ultimately resides in the same system is integrated with each other is explorable um, it really helps to break down those those silos and of course um, as I talked about before there's we have ways of, of raising people's awareness and notifying people via email of of um, requests and interaction. So go ahead, um, Yeah, so we we offer a variety of ways that you can explore our ELN further. So so we offer click through tours um, for, for a, a quick look at some of what we've been talking about. Um, we would also be delighted to demonstrate and discuss our ELN further. Um, and we'd also be happy to help set you up with, with a free trial for you to try this, uh, try this for your, yourselves. Um, really appreciate you listening in today. Um, and and would, would love to take any any questions that you might have. Yeah, so we've got some questions here. I'll, I'll try and kind of um, do them in relevance. So one of them uh, asked how to get a demo. Uh, Will actually just put this in the chat of scheduling a demo directly with um, Bernie or I or others from from LabKey who are kind of well well versed in the product. 
Um, another question um, from the poll, Bernie, is how can LabKey help with disagreement on choosing a system? <laughs> sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, I would say there, there are a few ways in which we, we do that regularly. I mean, so, so the first one is by, by being very human. Like we want to have conversations with you and your people. We want to be involved involved in those. Help you weigh the strategic advantages of of um, you know one approach versus the other, um, and and we're happy to do so without being pushy. You know, on the other hand, um, LabKey offers um, professional services to to improve and, and update our our products. And so if you know if there's disagreement between um, you know, between, you know, within your team about, about which one to go with and people, some of the people would, would like ours and some of the people would like a different one because there's, you know, some feature capability that they think is a real value add. We can, we can adapt. Um, we, we would love to hear from you about what, what that is and, and we can figure out how to, um, how to facilitate that within our own products as well. So th those, those are a couple of ways in which we can um, help, uh, help you uh, attain some agreement. Um, and then we've got uh, another question about um, how does referencing work in LabKey's ELN? Gotcha. Yeah. So without without doing a little bit of a show and tell, I would I would equate it. I would say it's similar to to the use of things like like at mentions in in Google Docs. Um, we have we have a, a way through just a, a couple of keystrokes to essentially show you all of the different types of data that are that are structured in our system and connected to each other that allow you to that allow you to peruse those different types you know, different cell lines or different uh, samples or different whatever it is um, and and select those things and then you just get this, this little pip within the notebook that um, that shows you the reference that you've made um, and we we give you a lot of detail about that and allow you to click through that and, and explore the underlying data it's a it's a pretty straightforward operation for any author. And, and I think this ties actually uh, well into one of the follow up questions of kind of what's the difference between a data connected ELN and a, a traditional ELN and all all sort of expand on on Bernie's answer of referencing of really the fact that traditional ELNs are what what some people refer to as sort of paper on glass, it is very sort of um, focused only on the notebook entry itself and has no kind of relation to the underlying data that is supporting the work in that notebook. And the referencing mechanism is a key way, obviously, to, to have that data connectivity. Um, okay, and then uh, how about uh, what makes LabKey's ELN better than others, Bernie? Um, well, there's there's a lot. Um, a couple of things that I that I said before, I, I I'd love to reemphasize. You know, one of them is that it requires essentially no effort to get started and to see value. You know, we can we can launch a um, cloud cloud based um, system for you uh, very very rapidly. Um, we can help you integrate it within your existing um, data infrastructure at, at your company. Um, and then in order to start making use of it, you actually don't have to do anything at all. Um, but we, um, we have uh, this team of, of um, excellent uh, support staff, account managers, um, support engineers, uh, and, and others who can help train your people up and guide you in ways of, of configuring your structured data to, to best model um, the reality of your lab. Um, and then, you know, make sure it's clear to you how to how to take advantage of that through through referencing in in the notebooks. I'll also add to this here. Bernie has done an exceptional amount of work with working with current clients and how they are struggling with their ELNs to make LabKey's ELN very very easy to use, as well as sort of creating an environment that is is uh, fulfilling kind of the the needs of of the lab in terms of that referencing capability review process being able to amend notebooks um, all at kind of the um, the advice and guidance by scientists working in the lab today. Then Hannah I see one question on here um, asks for a little bit more specifics about the difference between data connected ELN and ELN. I, I know you touched on that a little bit, but let me let me 
try to expand just for, for one moment on that. You know, I would say that the most common non-data connected ELNs, what they do is they have you store your data within the notebook itself. So that is a document, you know, whether it's ultimately a PDF or, or it's something within the application. Um, the data that you've stored in one notebook is not actually related to the data that's stored in another one. Um, and what that, yeah, and that that can be helpful. Uh, there, there's no doubt about that, about that. That's that's more useful than than paper. That's more useful than than um, some just free text options. Um, but when the data and the files are all actually in a structured database, it gives you the power to do a lot more after the fact. Um, for starters, it 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 makes it so that all types of related data are the, there for exploration and querying when you are preparing to file for an IND or when you are preparing to create reports for internal and external collaborators, when you are you know, trying to do some kind of uh, you know, post-work analytics, you don't have to go and extract each piece of data from each notebook, um, which can be incredibly taxing. Um, it's, it's available behind the scenes for, for querying of all kinds, querying and exploration. Um, and then as I kind of talked about it in my part of the presentation, you, you then, you, you can see the, the data itself stand alone in its relationships with each other. Um, and then you can also quickly and easily see all of the narrative context that's been composed um, in those notebooks about the operations that produce that data. And, and I'll plug here, um, if you still want more clarification, schedule a demo with us, we'll, we'll show you what it's about. Um, so we're running out of time. Uh, I think the the last there's a couple of questions about um, folks that that might be using LabKey or interested in sort of an on premise deployment. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go back to <clears throat> this uh, this table here where um, we do offer ELN as part of um, some of our LabKey server subscriptions, and so it definitely is possible to get an on-premise deployment of this if you need to. Um, and so, definitely reach out to us, contact us. We can and we can have that discussion. So, with that, I will stop sharing. And again, thank you everybody for for joining today. Um, it was wonderful to have you. <laughs>